So what we're going to do is look at radical stability, but not just in one aspect, but in multiple aspects. We're going to look at it directly through stability. We're going to look at it through bromination reactivity. And we're going to look at it through bond dissociation energy. So each of these is a ranking question, and we're just going to rank them by highest stability, highest bromination reactivity, and highest bond dissociation energy. So let's just start off with our stability. Well, what stabilizes a radical? Well, we have resonance stabilization, and we have be having a carbon being more substituted, so being a tertiary carbon versus a primary carbon. And things that make it worse are stuff like inductive effect. But gladly, we don't have any fluorines, chlorines, or bromine, bromines here. So we don't have to worry about inductive effect here. So two main things, resonance and being more substituted. So let's start off with the first one. The first one, we have a secondary carbon here. So we're going to label it a secondary. Here we have a primary carbon. Here we have a tertiary carbon. Here we have a secondary, but it's next to a carbon with a double bond. And it looks like we can have resonance here. So we're going to call this secondary allylic. And I'm going to write ally for short. And then we have a primary, but it's on a benzene ring. It's not a benzene radical, but rather a benzylic radical. So this is going to be a primary benzylic. Now, which one is the most stable? Well, we're going to look at resonance. And these two are the only ones that could have resonance because of this double bond. But benzene has almost four resonance forms here. So we're going to have this as the most stable, and this is the second. Now, what about these? Well, a tertiary carbon would provide electrons, electron density to the radical. Sorry about that. So the more electron density you have around the radical, the more stable the radical is. So this is going to be three, secondary is going to be four, and primary is going to be five. Now, what about bromination reactivity? Well, with bromination reactivity, it's figuring out what is the most stable carbon to form a radical. And then after that, we look at the radical stabilities. So if you look at this one, where is the most stable radical to form? Well, we have primaries over here, and then we just have secondaries all over. Well, we're just going to pick the secondary over here because it's closer to a carbon with more substituent, substitu substituents. Now, with this one, having a benzene radical will be terrible, especially over here. We can't even actually have it over here because this carbon is sp2, but a benzylic radical is really stable. Now over here, the most stable would be this tertiary carbon over there. Over here, well, we have a secondary allylic that's possible, but we also have a tertiary allylic over here that's possible. Now over here, we either can have a tertiary or a secondary allylic next to this double bond. So we're going to pick this secondary allylic. Residence is more important than just being substituted. Now that we have found the most stable radicals on each cyclohexane, or cyclohexanes or even benzene, we're going to look at their stabilities compared to each other. So this is a secondary. This one is a primary benzylic. This one is a just a tertiary. This one is a tertiary, but it's a lilac. And then this one is a secondary a lilac. So the most stable one would be the benzylic, simply because benzene has multiple resonance forms. So this is one. Now, we have two that are allylic. We have this tertiary one and secondary, but tertiary is more substituted, so this is going to be two, and this is going to be three. Now, comparing a tertiary to a secondary, tertiary is going to be more stable, so we're going to have four and then five. Now, what about bond dissociation energy? Well, if you have a high bond dissociation energy, that means it takes a lot of energy to create a radical. When we cut off this hydrogen, we're going to form a radical on the hydrogen and a radical here on this carbon. So, we're going to label we're going to label where the radicals are going to be. So we're going to have a radical on this tertiary carbon over here. If we break off this hydrogen, we're going to have a radical over here. If we break off this hydrogen, a radical over here, a radical over here, and then a radical over here. Now we're going to label them as to whether they are primary, secondary, tertiary, allylic, benzylic. So this one's a tertiary. This one is just a secondary. This one's secondary, but it's also allylic. This one's just purely primary, and then this one is also primary. And I forgot to actually label this. This was supposed to be benzylic, so I'm sorry about that. But this one is a primary benzylic. So how do we rank these? Well, the most stable one is the primary benzylic, because it's benzylic. 
So this is going to have the least bond dissociation energy. It's going to be very easy to break that bond. The second most stable is a secondary allylic. So it's going to have the second least amount of energy to dissociate. Then we have a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary. So tertiary, obviously, less energy to take than a secondary, and a secondary takes less energy to dissociate than a primary. So these are those are just three different examples of how to label radical stability. Either you can just be directly asked for it, you can be asked through bromination reactivity, or you can be asked through bond dissociation energy. So those are just three different examples.